Hey viewers, Jason, Joondal Up Electrical Services. I'm in Henley Brook on a roof. The rain's coming. You can see Perth City off in the distance over there. Just on the horizon. You can see it's all grey, so the rain's coming. But I thought I'd do a quick video on this one. Yes, I am doing a full supply and install. And I know I've said to many of you that I won't do them anymore. Um, but this one is a new build and it's recently been finished. I started work on the design and quote of this one quite a while ago. Um, and then they came back to me and said, well, you still do the job. And I said, well, yeah, I will. I spent a lot of time quoting and consulting and that sort of thing. Uh, we got 55 Trina 440 watt panels up here. This is a big one. It's a SIG Energy inverter and battery. So SIG store, 15 kilowatt uh, inverter. 32 kilowatt hour battery system um, but I thought I'd do a little video on what I'm doing here uh, now these panels are actually facing south but we wanted to maximize our solar generation um, so we've we've absolutely maxed out the inverter um, yes they're facing south um, but it, they're still going to produce good power there's not much tilt on this roof um, but what I'm doing here is I needed a, a string of 15 because I'm actually going to parallel it with these ones here um, and then I've got another two separate strings I've had to do that to get my um, maximum capacity on the inverter but uh, so that's north that's south and of course we get a little bit of shading which I didn't anticipate from this uh, raised section here on the two-story house now this is winter we're in the middle of winter pretty much at 10 a.m i've got shading to there all right so 10 a.m and then 11:30 there now i can't fit all my 15 panels on here um and i really needed 15 so i didn't want to do another two in par in um portrait above there because it's me being a stickler but more of the panel is going to be in the shade um, so I'm doing these two in landscape to get them further away from the shade but the other issue I've got is this is all one string so these these two are going to be blocking a lot of the um, power flow through the panels so I am using Tygo optimizers of course the solar panels have di um, bypass diodes but uh, it's not a good idea to be pumping all that energy uh, all through winter, spring, autumn um, through those two panels. Uh, so these two will have Tygo optimizers so they're bypassed and they're not stressed and not damaged. And um, in summer obviously the sun will be more directly above us and the shading will be more to here and of course they won't be. So I've got another string of 15 panels here and that will be paralleled with the other one now that is getting close to my short circuit current on the inverter very close however as, as we can see uh they're different orientations so they're never going to peak at exactly the same so i'm going to be fine there i've done that many a time not an issue that's my branch connectors over there and I know a lot of installers will scoff at these, but I've used them for years and years. And obviously, as long as they're terminated correctly, there is no issue whatsoever. Um, that goes down to my inverter. And we've got another 10 panels on this roof here. Uh, so really filling up the roof space on this one. Um, beautiful roof to work on. This is nice thick color bond. And I say thick because you can get some stuff that's thin and if you step on it, um, you'll hear it pop and crinkle, which is not ideal. This one's nice and strong so I can walk wherever I want. Just a pointer, if you are on a roof that has got the thin sheet metal, walk on the overlap there where the sheets overlap. It's obviously a lot stronger there and also walk on the screw lines there. Uh, just a little tip there for you. You can take it or leave it or do what you want with that. Got my earthing. Clenergy have got these new earth clamps. Uh, they've all been done right. You've got these little divots here that penetrate the anodizing, which is really important. The anodizing on these rails is actually ins an insulator. Uh, so it's important when you're doing your earthing that you penetrate the anodizing and uh, have all your rails earthed obviously i've only earthed every second rail but 
each panel uh, has those earthing bond plates on them anyway which continues your earthing i know some guys earth every individual rail the way i've interpreted interpreted the regulations you don't need to do that so i'm not doing it uh that's about all there is to say on this one for now i'm using this scissor hoist to get them up to me because uh, it is uh, a fairly high roof so i'll load them up in there raise them up and then i'll just take them off there and get them down but i need to get them down before this weather moves in um and more importantly the wind the wind is a problem for sure when i'm doing this on my own so i'll get back into it and i'll do another video video for you when i'm finished up like i said it is a sig energy system uh it is only my second one why is it my second one because i do have reservations about the product starting to see a few little cracks now in tech support um lots of people using them for off-grid don't don't do that it's you can't use a hybrid transformerless inverter for off-grid it's it's not going to end well um anyway i will do another video at the end of the job and wrap it all up then cheers righto that is the end of the day the weather's been nice to me i've managed to get all 55 panels up so i'm pretty impressed with that um pretty solid effort for one old boy on his own um there's our 15 down there you can see some cables still hanging out there because i haven't um, terminated them yet because uh, obviously i need to be able to work on the other end of them without them being live that's the two there that i've put in uh, landscape and um they should have minimal effect on the shading and got another 30 there all looking very nice indeed quite enjoyed this one perfect weather for it I feel very spoiled today and our other 10 down there conduit as we know we have to use heavy duty solar conduit now to other sparkies this may look like medium duty but it's not it's heavy duty um, but because it's exposed to the sun it is grey not orange and I've used a deck tight there which I think is a pathetic way of doing it but that's what we have to do now I didn't use Cory there because Cory would eventually break down over the years and uh, depending on what brand you use whether it's a good one or a bad one uh, within a couple of years you could end up with just exposed cable to the uh, elements there obviously rigid conduit using a bending spring to get that angle right for the entry into the roof space and um, that's not going anywhere that'll last when we do a solar system we're do designing them and installing them to last 20 years plus so you know Bear in mind, guys, installers, if you're doing conduits that are exposed to the elements like that, it's also got to be able to withstand sort of, you know, that, that time frame. So that's it for me. I am done here for about three weeks. I've got to head that way, about 5,000 kilometres to the other side of Australia, do some events with my son. Now I'm driving back. That is my last trip for this year. Oh, as you know, I've got to go to Darwin in September. Um, but uh, that will be my last trip over east uh, for the Pro-MX series. And then I can knuckle down and earn some money and get some uh, solar jobs done. And I will be back to this one then to do the inverter and the uh, batteries. So I'll... I'll do another video then. I'll probably post this one now because I haven't put anything up for ages. So I'll probably put this one up now and then um, do another one for the final result. Okay, cheers.